Hello everyone, my name is Bubble Zest, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video, we're playing as Portugal, attempting to Macau my day. So let's begin, shall we? Now, to start, we're definitely going to need to do some interesting things with this army of ours. So grab one of each division and send them to these islands here to prepare a naval invasion of Brazil. Hit every port that we can because we are going to cause an uprising in Brazil, and we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. We can't really afford to faff around, so hitting every port like this will mean they'll surrender pretty quickly. Now, we don't need to hit this port, but we still need to hit Sao Paulo, as well as Porto Algia here, so make sure you hit them, as that's where the capital of the Intragalicus will go eventually. But for the rest of the army, they could pretty much just stay in Portugal. No need to get them attritioned in any real way. So let's gather them up. There we go, under a field marshal order, 12 divisions. That should do. For our research, for the moment we only have two slots, so we need to prioritise our industry and electronics for the moment. Just build a crap ton of military factories. We'll get more civilian factories eventually, so it'll be fine. For our military factories, we're going to build some artillery and some close air support, there we go, and now for our dockyards, we're just going to spam out subs and put them in this fleet here, speaking of the navy, we're going to merge them together like this and send them here, Cape Verde, now for focus, we're going to rush down to the Kingdom Reunited, so we're going to do the Novo regime, go to speed 5, don't forget your intelligence agency and begin. With our first batch of political power, we're going to hire the financial expert, minus 5% consumer goods, very good. That increases our civilian factories for construction to 8, and when we unify the kingdoms, we'll get even more civilian factories for construction or purchasing goods. So it's very useful to hire the, the financial expert as soon as possible. Right, with the war already and done, we're immediately going to hire the traditionalist theorist, basically our equivalent of the silent workhorse. Now we're going to do the return. Now, for these stern monarchist sentiments, don't bother doing any of them. You can restore the monarchies without doing any of them, and it's a waste of political power and a waste of stability. So, just avoid them. They're not worth it. Now, at this point, just run down to the Empire of Brazil. Getting Brazil first is more important for our purposes. There we go. Brazilian civil war has begun, and now for us, we'll prepare to restore the monarchy in Portugal. Now immediately we're going to do war propaganda against them, and put our navy on strike force. Now take them off this plane, and there you go, now all our troops have left from their position, and they should be easily be able to capture the victory points to take out the Integralists. And there you have it, there's the Integralist war over. Now we'll just send the rest of our troops home, same with our navy. We're doing our war propaganda so we can go up to partial mob as soon as possible. As you can see, right now our war support is quite bad, but luckily, through this propaganda, we should get to the 25% we need. For your doctrine, superior firepower, no discussion there really. It's the best of the land doctrine, so make sure you have it. Same with radio, eventually. Right, that's the kingdom reunited, and now at this point we're going to rush down to military resource facilities, so continue the public works. Go down via Portuguese artillery, as that gives two military factories, while all others give one, so we may as well get the extra military factory from that. Immediately also, Brazil has accepted our unification offer. Also, we, need, we do need to make the collaboration government, so one in China, Raj, and Guinea-Bissau, there you go, very good. Japan has also declared war on China, and thanks to that, we can immediately send an attache to China, use that to grind some XP. And now at this point, we just need to get a really, really big army, so we can take down our enemies. Also, do not forget that you get Brazil's navy, these few ships, send them also to join your fleet. You get a few cruisers with that, so it's not bad at all. And now for the military factories, we're going to put two more into artillery, and then the rest into guns. And now we're going to rearrange it to be like this. 15 into guns, 10 into artillery. Obviously, don't forget to buy the steel that you need. There we go. 
Eventually, we want our production to look like this. Five into support equipment, five into CAS, but we need a lot of guns and a lot of artillery as we can't get any wars yet, so we need to basically build all of our own guns. So put 15 into guns and 10 into artillery. And now, with political power flowing in, we're going to go up to limited conscription, we're going to get a military theorist and then fill out our military high command. Stuff like the army logistics guy is definitely preferable so you can exercise your units. Speaking of units, also, we're going to create a blank unit with just one battalion of infantry. Train around 46 of them, or as many as you need to get 72 divisions overall. We're ultimately going to change everyone to this unit, which will be the 8-1 with maintenance companies. Which is a good division to take down the UK, and maybe Japan, but won't be the one we use to take down China. But that's okay, we can come to that later. Right, now we're going to do Portuguese artillery, and now we're going to make our ideal template. Again, the old 8-1 with maintenance companies, very good. Now we deploy these units, there we go, and now we'll place them equally in our armies. Like so. Perfect, I'd say. And now we're going to change all of these units over. See, we need a lot of equipment, but not too much we can build. We'll be fine. And now we're going to exercise them to level 3. In my opinion, train armies 2 and 3 to level 2, but, but train army 1 all to level 3, as they'll probably be the ones that land in the UK, so we need them to have as many bonuses as we can give them. Huh? You must be really desperate, Franco, if you're coming to me for help. Really desperate. But hey, that's a, a nice national spirit, actually, so I'll take it. <laughs> We could potentially send some goods to China, maybe, if we wanted to. Not that we have anything to spare, but it is generally useful for us if China wins. Right, with military research facilities done, our next step is to get down to standardisation. Plus 10% factory output is too good to ignore, so we'll do army reorganisation, which we should do anyway, because unreliable army is of an annoying as hell spirit. And as I say that, Spain wins. Congratulations. Eventually, we are going to have to defend the Amazon, so we are building some infrastructure in there. Also, we're going to need some units to defend it, so take this division here and edit it to be a simple 20 width with support, support artillery. Save that, and now just train up 12 of them. Oh, don't worry, we'll get the guns we need. And then, we'll, when they're ready, we'll place them around the Guianas so they can defend them. They'll do their trick pretty well, and the Allies should be able to take any of Brazil. You could try and defend Angola and Mozambique, but I'm not sure that's worth it, to be honest. Not really. Right, with standardisation done, the next thing we're going to do is second naval re-equipment, and then we're going to do colonial assimilation policy and luso-tropicalism, so we can integrate Angola and Mozambique. Once we've hit the button, we could easily lose them, but as long as we still hold them, once the two years are up, we will still call them, so it'll be fine. And obviously the free dockyards that this focus does is too good to pass up. It's just too good. Right, with Luso Tropicalism done, immediately begin to integrate Angola and Mozambique. And at this point, we're going to go down to hydroelectricity. Germany's gone to war with Poland, but of course we are not aligned, so we have to wait until 50% world tension before we can do any of our justifications or anything of the sort. Right, Germany's now gone after the Netherlands and the Low Countries, so now is our time to justify in France and plan our naval invasion. Obviously, it's the good old standard of invasion Britain, so hit Cardiff in Bristol and the tiles in between. It's bloody reliable, bloody useful. The main difference here is that we're going for the Bay of Biscay, which will increase the amount of naval supremacy we need. It's not too problematic, but it could be. Right, unfortunately, Germany has taken too long, and now it's pretty much time for us to go, and France is still alive. So, we're just going to have to chance it. Unsurprisingly, we've 
don't have the naval supremacy, but oh well. Luckily, we now have left port. That's pretty good. So it looks like we'll be okay. There we go. We've made our landfall, and now, of course, summon the rest of our army. Hell, even interestingly, our rule, Augusto, has managed to gain Invader. That's a nice trait. Could come in handy later. And now, France has fallen, and Vichy France should be up in a moment. Now, for this strategy, we do actually have to get involved with Vichy. So, immediately, as soon as Vichy appears just upon them, you're in the Axis. So, them having a guarantee means nothing. And now, of course, it's the standard gain war score in the United Kingdom strategy. Right, Vici has fallen, looks like it's time to finish up. Now do not, do not forget to call in your collaboration governments. You can't give territory to them via the occupied territory screen, so they must be in the war. So of course now let's finish up. We've done very well, so only July 1940, so I can't complain about this with 50% of the war score. And there you have it. Right, the first thing you must ensure is that Porto Brazilian China has Macau and this city here that I'm not going to bother to pronounce as their, their cause. For us, we're going to make sure we have Vietnam. And slowly, we're going to give our Indian puppet India as well. But at this point, the only other thing that you really need to ensure is the UK being a puppet as the UK still has their fleet and taking down Japan with them is much easier so that's what we're going to do And there you go, that's the peace deal. Or how we totally screwed Italy. Italy has taken basically nothing. Even Slovakia has taken more than them. 
The good thing about our engine puppet is it has none of the negative debuffs for engine, so look, it already has 4 million manpower. Also, we have completed the achievement BFF, as we are in a faction with the UK, which we made them be in the faction by force, but that's okay. And additionally, for any Portuguese viewers, we've completed the red map. There you go. The map are here, as we control from Mozambique to Angola, or the reverse of that. Pretty nice. We control all the way from Algiers, all the way down to Cape. Even got places like Egypt and Palestine as our puppets. Now, we need to focus on Japan. Which is why we're going to remain in the Axis for the moment. As you can see, Japan has... Or, will or has done the tripartite pact, which means they'll guarantee each other. But as long as we're in the Axis, the tripartite pact means crap. So let's send our armies together to get rid of Japan. Also don't forget to up the infrastructure in Vietnam and any of the Chinese puppet states. Let's do this. Oh, that is the saddest free France I have ever seen. I puppeted them in the state with 96 population. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, well, they should still have at least some fleet. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. That'll be helpful. But... Oh, dear. Poor Vichy France. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> For focus at this point, just do whatever you like, there's nothing too special. Apart from maybe Endless Sea, which is a surprisingly good buff, but a very long-winded one, so... Eh, who cares? <laughs> right, just to find Japan and prepare for your naval invasion. Now, we're going to hit around Nagasaki, around to, uh, say, here. Nah, that's not very sensible, is it? I've got a better idea. Let's put this army in half. Assign them from a cow, hit Nagasaki. But that will do from here. But for the other half of this army, what we're going to do is hit them from around Hiroshima. Just means a wider front. Right, our justification on Japan is ready. Let's get them. And now make sure you call in Great Britain and your puppet in Vichy France or Free France. Just so their navy will help you. As you can see, we've already lost supremacy, but that's okay. Hopefully, eventually, they'll come up after us and help. Now, you can get military access from the Chinese states, so use that for any shenanigans you may like. Right, finally, after a very, very long time, we got our naval supremacy. <laughs> And there you go, Japan is dead. Right, for this we are going to definitely, definitely puppet Japan. I see no reason not to. Japan will make a very good puppet. When we need to take down China, they can continue their naval invasions and stuff. And yeah, take Korea as a puppet as long as... may as well. And there you go. As you can see now, we have also an interesting proposition. Notice how the states have a truce. Well, we could, if it was longer, use justifications and burst through them, but clearly that's not going to work as the truce is barely for a month. So what we're really going to do is get 14 fours and then go after Japan. I mean China. China's our final subject. But that's going to have to be some time. We don't have the guns for it, annoyingly, nor the artillery, or much else, really. 
Right, time to justify in the Guangxi clique, and by extension the whole Chinese United Front. Pushing through these mountains around Yan'an and the Guangxi border will be the bloodiest part of the war. Annoying, but once we push through them, China should fall. Especially with Japan and the UK on our side. Japan's AI will still love to naval invade them. Same with the UK. Right. Let's take down Guangxi, and by extension the whole United Front. It's called in Japan and the UK, and let's prepare. There you go, China's now been called in. Of course, we'll call in our puppet. Do make sure it does not capitulate. It can't. This puppet cannot capitulate. There you go, there's the rest of the Chinese United Front. Which will now allow us to make a front line head after them. Like I said, breaking through the mountains might be a bit hard, but once you break through there, you should be okay. Let's do this. Oh yeah, and don't forget to call in any puppets in India. But they are clearly not for What?!
finally. It is over. Yes, pushing through China is such a pain, but it is possible. It's just that Chinese unity minus 15% surrender limit or whatever is so annoying. Now, you're going to have to pass a load of times so that we can give everything to Porto Brazilian China, our puppet. As you can see, they've already taken a state as they have a core on it. Now, let's give them all of main China. That's good. All of Guangxi. Nice. All of Yan'an. Perfect. Shangzi. Mm-hmm. Zebi Shamma. And now finally, Mao. And there you go. Welcome to Xinjiang. Are we still at war with them? Yep, we're still at war with Xinjiang somehow. Okay. Looks like we've got one more little war to deal with. Very well, Sing Yang. This is your day of reckoning. Boys, it's time to go and get Sheng. How he didn't get involved in the peace deal, I'll never know. <laughs>